The question of every election is, who is it a referendum on? The assumption of Republicans was, it's got to be a referendum on the party in power. It has to be. The party in power is doing a terrible job and it's unified. They have the House, they have the Senate, they have the presidency. All the bad stuff is their fault. In many of these races, the referendum turned into a referendum not on Joe Biden and the Democrats, but into a referendum on the particular weird out-of-the-box candidates that Republicans chose in many of these areas. Candidates who made many independents feel insecure. And this was a major problem. It was a serious problem for the Republicans. Well, folks, we got to recap that midterm 2022 election. What happened? What went wrong? How do Republicans fix it? And what kind of opportunities lie ahead for them if they do? This video is sponsored by Ring. What went wrong is the big question, because here's the thing. It was supposed to be a red wave, or at least a red tide. And instead, it turned into a red trickle, by which I mean it looks like the Republicans are going to end up with bare control of the House, a very, very small majority, as opposed to what should have been a sweeping majority. They may end up in control of the Senate. That is going to depend, it looks like, on a Georgia runoff, which doesn't look particularly amazing because it's Herschel Walker against Raphael Warnock, and Walker doesn't happen to be a particularly strong candidate. So what went wrong? What exactly happened here? Well, the answer is actually fairly obvious. The Republicans ran a lot of crappy candidates. Where Republicans ran strong candidates who are not associated with out-of-the-box crazy ideas, they won, and they won big. The big contrast in 2022 is between Florida, where Republicans absolutely cleaned up, and, say, the Georgia gubernatorial race, where Brian Kemp did really well against Stacey Abrams, or Texas, where Greg Abbott did really well against Beto O'Rourke. But Democrats poured tons of money into these places. The contrast is those places versus all the other places where the Republicans wildly underperformed. And here I'm talking about Pennsylvania where they ran Doug Mastrano, who got absolutely smoked by Josh Shapiro in the gubernatorial race, or New Hampshire, where Don Balduck got smoked by Maggie Hassan. These are the races where things should have gone differently because all the fundamental underlying factors were in favor of Republicans here. A 43% approval rating for the current president of the United States, 75% of Americans in exit polls saying that the economy was moving in the wrong direction, 28% approval rating for Joe Biden among independents, 40-year high in inflation, chaos in the Middle East, breaking out again, thanks to Iran. Right? Like, tons of stuff happening in the world right now. None of it particularly good for the Democrats, which is why, if you looked at the polls, all the movement in the last weeks was toward the Republicans. So what went wrong? The answer is Republicans assumed in a lot of these races that the fundamentals against Joe Biden were so strong they could literally go down to the homeless shelter, pick up some people, and put them up for races. That is not how politics works. And this is what the independents showed. So many of those same independents who didn't like Joe Biden voted for a Democratic candidate because they looked at the Republican candidate and they said, this is not somebody I can trust with governance. This is the constant story. The more solid the Republican candidate, the better the candidate did. I know this seems like tough stuff, but it really is not. Republicans made a bad habit of, in primaries, picking candidates who seemed attractive because they were fight, fight, fight people, but they didn't actually guarantee the possibility of solid governance, solid, sober stuff once they were in office. See, think of politics like a cake. Okay, and the cake has a couple of elements. It's got the cake, it's got the icing. Republicans are very attracted by the icing. We love the icing. The icing is the social culture war kind of stuff, the sexy stuff where you're fighting against the wild equity agenda of the Democrats. You're fighting against the transing of the children, all that kind of, all this stuff is super important. Icing is great. You can't have a great cake without the icing. But if the cake is icing and what is underneath the icing is actually not cake, it's just a bag of flaming garbage, the icing is going to help. And so Republicans kept picking candidates where there was no evidence these people were going to be good at governing. They had been at like QAnon rallies six months beforehand. That is not going to win. And here's the thing. If you actually wish to see conservatism win, you need people to win their races. You need to win their races. This is not all that shocking. That was the big problem here. People got really happy about the underlying bad conditions for Democrats, and they assumed they could put up a bag of crap and that that bag of crap would then be elected to high office. And that is typically not how it works for Republicans. You have to demonstrate at best like Ron DeSantis, that you've got cake, you're really good at governance, and you can do the icing really well. You can fight the media. You can fight the social issues. You can fight woke corporatism. All those things you can fight. But the cake has to be there. Or like Brian Kemp, who fought a few of the cultural issues, but more was just the cake. There wasn't like tons and tons of icing. It was mostly just cake. Or you make Mike DeWine in Ohio, who earned the trust of his population in Ohio to the extent that he won over 60% of the vote in Ohio. J.D. Vance, by contrast, won about 53% of the vote because he was a more controversial candidate. Well, folks, with the holidays coming around the corner, many of us will be traveling to see our families and loved ones soon. You might find yourself away from home more often than not. That's why I've decided to team up 
with my friends over at Ring. With Ring security products, you can rest easy knowing your home and family are safe when you're not there. The Ring doorbell notifies you when guests or packages arrive. Ring's indoor cameras let you keep an eye on kids and pets while you're away. Ring alarm will alert you of any motion detection while the house is empty. Plus, if you add smart lighting around your home, you can turn lights on and off while you're away too. Ring's home security products don't just help keep your home and family safe. They make perfect gifts for everybody on your holiday list. We've been using Ring for years to keep our home safe. That's the thing that matters most to me because sometimes when I'm away from the house, I want to make sure that my family is doing well. This is what Ring is for. Head on over to ring.com slash collections slash offers. Find out how you can live a little more stress-free this season with a Ring product that is right for you. That's ring.com slash collections slash offers. Ring.com slash collections slash offers to see what they can offer you. The question of every election is, who is it a referendum on? The assumption of Republicans was, it's got to be a referendum on the party in power. It has to be. The party in power is doing a terrible job and it's unified. They have the House, they have the Senate, they have the presidency. All the bad stuff is their fault. In many of these races, the referendum turned into a referendum not on Joe Biden and the Democrats, but into a referendum on the particular weird out-of-the-box candidates that Republicans chose in many of these areas. Candidates who made many independents feel insecure. And this was a major problem. It was a serious problem for the Republicans. So what does that mean for 2024 and looking forward? What it means is that if the Republicans look at the underlying trends, Republicans did well with black voters. They did well with Hispanic voters. They did better with suburban women. In the generic congressional ballot, Republicans will have won this election by somewhere between two and four points. That's not a bad election on the surface of it. It just didn't materialize in many of the key races, again, because of bad candidate choice. And many of those candidates were tied up in the Donald Trump desire to see people talk incessantly about the 2020 election and his claim that the election was stolen from him. This is why, in the immediate aftermath of the election, he had Donald Trump putting out on Truth Social messages about Don Baldock being insufficiently sycophantic to him. He picked Don Baldock. He picked Don Baldock in New Hampshire specifically because Don Baldock denied the results of the 2020 election. That's why Trump loved him. And then Don Baldock was asked, did Trump win the election? And he said, no. And then he lost. And Trump said, well, it was because he, didn't, he, he refused to go along with me. No, President Trump, that is not what happened. Don Baldock was a bad candidate. You picked him in the primaries. That one's on you. Same thing happened with Mehmet Oz. Apparently, Donald Trump endorsed Mehmet Oz, who barely, barely eked out a primary victory against Dave McCormick in Pennsylvania on the basis that Melania liked Dr. Oz on TV. And that is not how you pick candidates. President Trump picked Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania. He endorsed him. He wanted him. Why? Because Mastriano said that the election of 2020 was stolen. Regardless of what you believe about the election of 2020, If your main issue in 2022 is election 2020, you're going to lose. It's going to be a serious problem for you as a candidate. So moving forward toward 2024, Republicans are going to have a choice. Right now, they have the Florida model. The Florida model is Ron DeSantis took a state that he won by 30,000 votes in 2018, 0.4% of the vote. And he transformed that into a 20-point victory. He won that state by 1.5 million votes. That was his margin of victory. The rest of the state went red as well. Republicans picked up four House seats. In Florida, Marco Rubio walked away with a 16 percentage point win over Val Demings. That was supposed to be a close race. What happened in Florida? Ron DeSantis is good at governing. He is good at organizing. He's a good candidate. Your choice. Do you want the candidate who grows majorities, large majorities, out of opportunities? Or do you want the candidate in 2024 who took an electoral college victory and a popular vote loss in 2016 and proceeded to turn that into an electoral vote loss and a popular vote loss in 2020 and then proceeded to give away two Georgia Senate seats in 2020? and then proceeded to give away many seats in the election of 2022. Listen, I thought that President Trump did many, many wonderful things as president. The question is, what do you think he's going to do as candidate Trump in 2024? How do you think he has impacted the Republican Party going forward? And what will he do to fix that? Is he capable of shifting and moving? Is he capable of commonsensical change? So far, he's not shown any evidence that he is. He's going to have to change that. He spent the days since the election ripping on Ron DeSantis, the most successful Republican governor of any of our lifetimes. Does that seem like a smart, intelligent, and well-calibrated move designed to draw independence in the future? Or does it seem narcissistic and divisive? Right? These are serious questions that must be asked moving forward, especially if you want to win the independence. The story of the last few election cycles is also how the independents voted. In 2016, undecided voters, day of the election, broke two to one for Trump. In 2020, undecided voters, day of the election, broke two to one for Biden. 2022, undecided voters broke halfway down the middle. They split. That shouldn't have happened. Republicans should have walked away with the undecideds. They didn't. That's a serious, serious problem. Moving forward, Republicans will be presented with an opportunity because Democrats are not learning any lessons because Democrats did better than they expected. Democrats believe they can do whatever they want. Joe Biden literally said this. He was asked, what are you going to change? He said nothing. What in the next two years do you intend to do differently 
uh, to change people's uh, opinion of the direction of the country, particularly as you contemplate a run for president in 2024? Nothing, because they're just finding out what we're doing. They're going to keep doubling down on the big spending, on the equity garbage, on the transing of the children. They're going to keep doubling down on the wild social radicalism. They're going to keep doubling down on the inflationary policy and bad fiscal and economic policy that leads to stagnation. They're going to keep doing that sort of stuff. Republicans will get another bite at the apple. All they have to do is get sober and get serious and stop pretending that just because Democrats are bad, that means you can run whomever you want and that person will inevitably win. Wrong. You still have to do the stuff that gets you a victory. And that means govern well and be serious about campaigning and be serious about who your opponents are rather than promoting whatever idea floats in your head that day.